Hey everyone, it's Mark Ferguson and welcome to another virtual real estate video. Um, welcome to the channel if you have not been here before. It's when I just start up, I have another real real estate channel as well, Invest For More, and we go over all our flips and rentals and stuff we do in real life, but this is more about virtual real estate. So of course we like it when you like, subscribe, leave comments, so please do that if you have any questions or think what we're offering is valuable. Um, we're gonna talk about what exactly is virtual real estate in this video. I know it can be very confusing for some people. Some people think it's absolutely crazy, and I used to kind of be in that boat as well until I learned a little bit more about it, what it is, and had some fun with it. It can actually be really fun, and who doesn't like fun? So <laughs> we'll talk about a lot of that stuff. All right, so what exactly is virtual real estate or the metaverse, and what does it do? Well, it can be very confusing at first, but I'll try and give you an idea of what all this is. The metaverse is just a description of the virtual real estate world. So there isn't like one metaverse or it's not like a thing you sign up for. It's basically just a space. It's like the internet, right? There's the internet, there's all this stuff within the internet. So many different things can be called within the internet and providing internet, all of that stuff. But you can't just you know sign up for the internet. You have to sign up for hosts or have websites or different stuff. The metaverse is like that. Just this one big space where there are different virtual real estate worlds. And so within the metaverse, you have Decentraland, Sandbox, Upland, um, Superworld, all kinds of different worlds out there that have their own space their own rules, their own guidelines, sometimes their own currency, and they're all kind of operating separately from these other worlds. So it's you know like playing a video game that's completely separate from Nintendo, but Nintendo is how you play all these different video games. But technically you don't even need a Nintendo to play these games, you can just play them wherever you want. <laughs> so it's, it's confusing, but it makes sense after a little bit of digging and researching. So. Each of these lands has their own rules and regulations, and they're all backed by blockchain technology. That's kind of one thing that ties them all into the metaverse. You know, Sim City or The Sims is a really cool game, sort of about real estate and life, but that's not part of the metaverse. It's not backed by blockchain. It's not part of this new technology. So that's another thing is all of these worlds within the metaverse are using kind of either cryptocurrencies or blockchain technology to run the simulations or the virtualness, however you want to describe it. <laughs> um, so how do each of these worlds work? Well, they're all different, but many of them, Decentraland, um, Sandbox, some of the others have limited amounts of land, right? They've created this world. They have their own unique map. It's not like the earth or the planets, just like their own digital map. They have plots of land that you can buy online or virtually. Once you buy these plots of land, they are yours. It's minted on the blockchain. It's transparent. Everybody can see who owns them. You have title to them. And a lot of people will ask, well, why would I want to buy a virtual piece of land I can't go to or hang out on or step on? And there's a lot of reasons for that. But um, something to think about is, they have created some scarcity in some of these worlds. So some people say, well, why would I buy virtual real estate? They're just going to make more of it. Well, the way the blockchain is set up, the way they set up these worlds from the beginning, they can't add more land. They can't just build another world. They can't just add another continent, infill some oceans, and have more land. That's it. Once they've reached a certain amount, they're done. Now, other worlds have the ability to expand and add more land. So in, you know, what you'll find is the worlds with the limited land and are doing well with popularity, will have more expensive prices than the worlds that don't have as limited a land. Just like real life. The more scarce something is, the more expensive it will be, and the more people who want to buy those one pieces of land because they can't get any other. So that has been created, especially in Decentraland, especially in Sandbox, where you see prices tens of thousands of dollars for one plot of virtual real estate. Some have sold for millions of dollars. Yes, Decentraland had a plot of land sell for $2.4 million a few weeks ago. So why would anybody pay that much for
for virtual land that you can't stand on go to? Well, you can sort of go to it, right? If you go to Decentraland, you can walk into the world on your computer or your phone, or if you, I think they have virtual reality headsets that work. I, I haven't gotten that far yet. And you can see what's there. You can look around, you can see the land. People can build stuff, decorate things. They can create their own custom piece of land. And so that's cool and fun, but obviously most people don't think that's worth $2.4 million. Well, some big brands are starting to get involved and they think these plots of land will be worth millions of dollars because if they can get plots of land close to where people, you know, first sign up into this world or first enter this portal and, you know, they're looking around and the first thing they see is your brand right there, right? That's a pretty expensive, valuable piece of real estate if that's the first thing they see or it's really close or it's on a path they have to take to go somewhere else. Just like in real life, you find the most expensive, most valuable real estate where the most people are, the busiest areas, the most foot traffic, New York City, San Francisco, you know, those are the most expensive places. You find the most people and the most limited amount of land. So these brands are buying these places thinking, hey, we can sell our stuff in these lands. We could have music, movies, um, hold NFTs, which are non-fungible, um, non-fungible tokens. Yes. <laughs> and those are like virtual pieces of art or pictures or things you create and can sell. That's a whole nother discussion we may have later on. That's a little bit beyond my understanding too. I, I know how the basics, but it's kind of crazy how much people are paying for it. So they have these plots of land where people can go to and visit. And there's no middleman, right? There's no government charging taxes on the property, you know, for schools and police and all of that. Um, there's no utilities you're paying to keep the electricity on, at least, you know, for your computer. Yes, in real life, but not on the virtual world. There's no um, property manager. There's no tenant you're paying, right? You own this piece of land. It's yours in title. And then it can be set up where if people visit it, they get charged if they want to listen to a song they want to watch a movie, they get charged, and that money goes directly to the brand, not through all these middlemen. There are less expenses, there's less things going on through it. Now, it's a whole lot of kinks, a whole lot of you know, details that have to be worked out before you get to this point, to that point of so many things happening in this digital real estate world. But that's kind of the thought process of where it could go and why companies are paying so much money for some of these properties. Now, there's other worlds too. So you have Decentraland, it uses its own currency called MANA. So you have a mix of a new virtual world with a new cryptocurrency. You can buy the currency, invest in that, hope it goes up. You can also buy property, hope it goes up. You can hope they both go up. <laughs> there's all kinds of things going on. Of course, they could both go down too. So there's all kinds of different things that could happen. Sandbox has its own cryptocurrency, uh, Sand, but then you can also use Ethereum. It can get very confusing trying to figure out everything that's happening. But the basic idea is it's virtual, right? It's not like a virtual assistant or doing real estate in another state. It is all online, not in real life, virtual real estate. So you might hear, well, there's tens of thousands of dollars you have to spend, all this money, all this risk, you have to figure out all these currencies. That sounds kind of crazy. And I agree. And that's kind of why I haven't bought or invested in any of those worlds, but I have started investing in a different one, it's called Upland. And it is really fun and really cool. Now, will it be as good of an investment as the other ones? Hard to say, who knows, it has some downsides to it, but it's really fun. <laughs> I'll talk to you about why it's fun and why I've chosen that one to kind of invest some time and money into. Okay, so here is Upland. And as you can see, it's based on the real world, which I really, really like. That's one thing I liked about it was you can find a plot of land where you live and it's the actual dimensions and land. Now, you might not be able to buy it yet because it's very limited on what areas are open to purchase, but that's still really cool. So if you're in a certain area, you can find properties. I actually own a property in Cleveland, Ohio, and I found it on here. Someone else owns it right now. I made them an offer to buy it, but they didn't accept it. Um, so that was really cool. But you have these cities um, that are open, have areas, and you can send your explorer guy. This is an explorer who is kind of like your 
avatar and walks around and does stuff and you can have him walk around a city or he can take a train or airplane to other cities so that can be kind of difficult it's not easy to travel but it makes some interesting stuff for the game so we have new orleans nashville kansas city chicago cleveland the bronx um new york city uh staten island rutherford there's a lot of little cities in there all open for business now I said you can buy plots of land here, and that is really cool. So I went to New Orleans first, and it's a good place to start because there are still properties available to mint, which means you're the first one to buy them and create them. And these are the properties I have here right now. And so you can buy properties and mint them, or you can buy properties from other people who've already owned them. Usually it's cheaper to mint them, and that's how you can make some money too. So you can flip properties, buy them, sell them to other people. You get a kind of a yield on properties you own. You get paid every um, day pretty much a certain percentage. It's about 17% of the mint price. But if you buy in the secondary market, which is usually more expensive, that price goes down. And they have something called collections as well that allow you to have special properties and increase the yield and that are worth more money and more valuable. So it's pretty fun buying these properties and then figuring out everything that happens. So you have to zoom in here a ways. And after you zoom in a while, ah, there, you can kind of see these are the properties. Light blue means owned by someone else. Light green means someone else owns them and is trying to sell them. And blue are mine. And they're kind of a, a dark gray if they're not minted by anybody and available for you to mint. You do have to have your Explorer guy though within a certain range to mint them and find those properties. So you can click on a property. I'm actually building something on this property so you can build stuff too, which is kind of crazy and not really sure where that's going yet, but <laughs> that could be fun in the future. And something really cool too is you can get a street view and see on Google exactly what plot of land you have, which is a cool house in New Orleans that I bought. now. I will let you know how cool your house is, how neat it is, doesn't usually have an effect on its value, how big it is, any of that. What has an effect on value, we'll talk about here in a second, but don't get caught up in trying to buy super cool, amazing looking houses, because it really doesn't matter. A really run down vacant lot can be worth just as much as a really cool house in real life in this game, or investment, however you want to call it. So you can buy properties and you buy properties with UPX, which is right up here. And you can buy UPX on here. And basically it's a dollar for every thousand UPX that you can buy. Now, so you can buy UPX straight up or you can even buy properties for dollars and then sell them for UPX or later on sell them for dollars. So there is a way to get your money out of this game that's one downside it has. The other games have their own cryptocurrency. You can buy property, sell it, convert that cryptocurrency to dollars, and have a real return. The UPX that's used in this game, you can't turn in for dollars or um, you know sell it directly for dollars. The only way to get dollars out is to have a property and sell it for dollars. I can see this one right here is priced at $9.95. Then you get that money. That is actual US dollars. So it's a little tougher to get money that way, but it's also nicer because it's way easier to use because there aren't as many restrictions on the UPX. Since it's not like a real cryptocurrency, you can get it in the US much easier. You don't have to go through all these crazy exchanges and wallets to get it. So there's pros and cons. But you can go to this property on Palm Tier, pay $9.95. Um, I'm not going to, well, I can click this. I haven't bought it yet. <laughs> It'll pull up some payment options for you. And um, yes, you can buy it right now pretty quickly after you get that set up. You have that property. Then once you have the property, you can sell it for UPX, keep it, sell it for dollars. Once you reach a certain amount in your account, you have to get to a certain level to sell for dollars. But you can often, often get properties cheaper if you pay for dollars than if you buy them for UPX. So if you really want to spend a lot of money in the game, invest money into it. It might be worthwhile to buy for dollars, then sell for UPX, then just um, doing the straight get UPX method right here. So lots of different options there. So um, that's the basics of buying properties. You get a, let me go back here, a yield, like I said, for owning the properties while I own it. Um, you can see right here, I own 105 UPX per month. 
And that's without it being in a collection. Collections make it earn even more. And you can see what those collections are and how those work here. So this little button over here on the bottom right, if you can see where I'm clicking, will show you where all the neighborhoods are. So I'll scroll out a little bit. And you can see all these Uptown, Turo, Garden District, all these little neighborhoods. And that's a very important thing to know when valuing properties, because if I click on these three little buttons here, you have a menu of all kinds of things. You can look at your properties, you can look at collections, you can see what your net worth is, um, lots of different options down there. Now, the collections is important because this tells you the East Bay is a collection. Um, Piedmont, you know, just for owning enough properties in a city, does this as well. Um, Rockbridge, Shafter, and these become more exclusive, more rare. You get bonuses and 2.3 times the earnings you get with these collections. So if you have properties in these collections, um, they can be worth hundreds of thousands of UPX or more. So, right, if you don't have one in a collection, it might be worth 10,000, 15,000 UPX. If you get one in a smaller collection, maybe it's worth 20,000, 25,000 UPX. You get one in the mid range, maybe it's 50 to 100,000. Then you get into the rare and ultra rare, and you're talking about hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of UPX for those properties. So, if you see huge discrepancies in prices, that could be why. And some people just charge crazy amounts for prices as well. So that's something to think about too. <laughs> Don't just because just somebody's asking a price doesn't mean it's worth that price. So those are some things to think about. Um, some other things I mentioned my explorer and we're going to hit this button on the bottom left and that takes me to my explorer. And he is in the middle of the ocean over here in um, Berkeley. So they opened up Berkeley today. One neighborhood is a stress test, so they are constantly opening new neighborhoods in cities, which is really, really cool. Because there's this big mad rush to buy properties and mint them. And if you get some, you can usually sell them right away, make a profit. That's what I did. Buy some other ones. You can try and um, find neighborhoods that will be collections because when they open a new city, the collection isn't announced for a week. So you can buy stuff in different cities, on different streets, in different areas, and hope it becomes a collection. You get lucky and they're worth a lot. So it can be a whole lot of fun. But I'm going to zoom in here, and um, this is one I bought here. We're going to, you can send your guy to different spots within the city, and I have another video on that. But you can't send him to different cities. You have to take the train or plane. But within a city, you can send him to your own properties for free, or you can send him to other properties for a small fee, 20, 40 UPX. But you have a limited amount of sends. Again, I have another video that goes over exactly how that works. But I can click him here. And if there were properties available right here, they'd turn light green. I could click on them. I could say buy. Now, it wouldn't be 45000 because someone already owns it. It'd be like twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 if they weren't minted yet, and we could buy them right away. And you'll notice my guy just starts walking in a random direction. That's how it works. You send him somewhere. He just starts walking one direction. You can send him back. He'll walk another direction. So he just kind of goes in random areas. You can't always make him walk where you want but you can send him where he wants. So that is kind of the basics of Upland. Um, prices have been going up a lot. You can actually make real money, invest money. You can flip properties, sell properties, hold them as rentals. And it's not exactly the same as real real estate, how it works, but it's pretty similar. And you see a lot of FOMO, fear of missing out, where people are paying really high prices for certain properties, especially with these sitting open, city openings. And you'll see their prices drop and go back up again. And so it's very interesting seeing how it works. And there's also a level of competition there as well for <laughs> trying to get in there and um, get your properties before anybody else does. So that's kind of the basics of Upland. Really fun game. We'll have a lot more videos on Upland and how it works in more detail because there's a lot to go over, a lot we could be talking about. But that's the basic overview. And what about the rest of virtual real estate? All right, so that's the basic of Upland, which is one of the worlds in the metaverse. So um, like I said, it can be kind of tricky and confusing learning everything that's going on in one world. So trying to learn about all the worlds at once um, can be confusing and tricky as well. So that's why I've been focusing on one. And it's one with a very small um, entry, barrier entry. 
you start out with some UPX, you can buy a property without putting any money into it, and then you can spend some money if you want to. Now, something else too, if you haven't started an account yet, if you want to do an account with Upland, please use a referral code, whether it's mine or someone else's, I'll list mine below. Sign up with a referral code, because if you do end up spending money, they will double your first spend, and I get a bonus, or whoever refers you to them gets a bonus too. I didn't do that when I started, I should have, because I missed out on some free UPX, but make sure you sign up with a referral code and you get that extra bonus. Um, as far as the other metaverse worlds, I'm gonna look into them more, I'm doing more research, um, but this is the most fun one I've found so far and kind of competitive and it's kind of easy to get involved without spending a whole lot of money, so that makes it fun. Will it be the best investment in the world? Who knows? Maybe it'll spittle out into nothing, Maybe it'll become something huge. Maybe it'll just become kind of cool and there'll be some investment there. You never know. But we'll see how it goes. We'll have a lot more videos on that. Um, we'll show you me buying some properties in um, these city openings and how it works and how fast it goes. It goes fast. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of fun. So thank you for watching. Love the support. Love the likes. Love the comments. Love shares. Welcome new subscribers. It's a brand new channel. So hopefully we can make it grow. And again, if you want to see my real real estate investing channel, that's Mark Ferguson, Invest for More, Invest F-O-U-R-M-O-R-E. Thanks a lot. We'll be back.